The following is a rebroadcast of TV50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Sandy's Bowling Lanes in Wyndham for another Sunday edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And we are starting a brand new ladder championship series this week. And of course, that means we have uh, two brand new bowlers to tell you about. And we also want to welcome back uh, Dan Murphy, who's back from his five week around the world vacation. Yeah, I went to all these kind of countries the Concord, East Concord. <laughs> great, great to be back, Doug. All right, well, we've got a uh, brand new ladder series here, Dan. And we've got uh, a couple of guys who've been with us once before, uh, actually twice before each. Uh, they've been here on two different occasions. Uh, there you get a look, Pat Pay and Rick Kojecki. Let's take a look at them uh, both in slow motion. First of all, Rick Kojecki. Well, uh, he's been with us before, as you said, and just about a year ago, last January, he was with us, and he had a, a great match against Mike Calvetti where he needed a, a 10 box, a last box to win, and he did uh, by one pin. So that was exciting. He's been through the heat of battle, so it should be a good one with him. And I know he won't throw many half whisters like he threw in the warm-up, so uh, he'll be okay, I'm sure. Yeah, if you're going to throw one, you might as well throw in the warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, of course, uh, back for altogether his fourth appearance on the show. He has won one and lost two, and he'll be going up against this man, Pat Pay. Uh, former New Hampshire State champ, Pat Pay, um, very formidable opponent. He can throw big strings. Uh, Rick's going to have to really be on top of his game, and uh, Pat's always tough. All right, of course, we're working our way up the ladder and up toward the big prize money. And speaking of big money, we have big money in the bonus ball contest. For those of you who've mailed postcards in, well, you've got a good shot at $150 coming up at the end of this week's program. But all of that is a little bit later on. We have three strings of candle pin bowling coming up for you, and we're going to start with number one after these messages. Don't go away. Once again, let's take a look at the names and faces of the uh, folks who will be joining us in the weeks to come. First of all, Pat Pay and Rick Kojecki starting off uh, with this week's program. And then, of course, in the five-week series, we will also see Bob Mazur, who's been here before, John Burke, a newcomer, Mike Brutzos making a return appearance uh, with us on Stars and Strikes, and Bill Gover Jr. will be here for his first appearance, and he leads the ladder with that number one position. But right now, we're set to go with the first round of this ladder series, and Rick Kojecki is ready to go. Are you doing your audience warm up now, are you? Yes. <laughs> and Rick Kajeki will start with a strike. A slow strike, yes, but a strike nonetheless. Oh, it was right in the 1-3 pocket. It just took a little while ago, but the ball was there. It's like a double here. And we're off. Wow, <laughs> what a start. Rick was just throwing us off, throwing, that, throwing that half Worcester in the warm up. So a 29 start for Rick Ajecki. And now Pat Pay. himself to 6'10". Nice and start. Pat starts with a mark. Once again, want to thank uh, Gary Duffett, who filled in for Dan Murphy these past five weeks. Yes, I also would like to thank our good friend, Gary. He wants to know, though, when he's going to get to go on one of these five-week vacations. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him when he can win a match on the show. I'll be home about an hour today, and I'll get a phone call. <laughs> One, three, nine, and ten. Trying to split the one and the three. Now he goes on the outside. Nice 
Rick, as I mentioned in the open, has uh, been with us three times previously. Will it go? Well, he'll be shooting at a very, very well blocked eight pin here. Well, if I was him, in which I'm not, so he'll play it his own way, but I, well, even that's, well, I'd try to go that back piece of wood. You can just see it uh, to the right. Try to get through those first few pieces. Ah, oh, he went right straight at it. Nice shot. Not an easy shot. No. And Pat Pay sends that head pin dancing across. <laughs> Nothing came close to hitting the 6, 9, and 10 for this triangle he had there. Blew out the first seven, though. Dan, while you were away, we had um, our own little version of the NFL instant replay rule. I understand. In fact, I, I, I saw the show. It was uh, quite interesting, actually. But of course, as in the NFL, it had to be indisputable evidence <laughs> that the call was correct. So we went back and looked at the replay, and sure enough, we had to take a pin away. Well, we're finally putting Canopin Bowling on the pedestal that should be on. We're <laughs> catching right up with the NFL. <laughs> Although, for the record, I think replay works better in bowling than it does in the NFL. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this was on a spare for Rick Kocecki. Oh, tried it inside, off the wall. Got the troublesome six pin, but left the seven. Sixty-four half for Rick, whose first appearance on the show was back on August 25th, 1985, when Rick lost to Dan Borden. And oh, a strike. strike. Boy, for a minute there, it looked like he was going to be left with a four and a six. Kind of heavy on the head pin. Got a nice break off both sidewalls. There's a four and a six. And there they go for the strike. And here goes Pat Pay on a spare with a four fill. Missing that head pin to the left. Oh, nice try. <laughs> Take the time to wish you a, a Merry Christmas, Doug, and hope you have a nice holiday. Oh, the same to you and yours, and uh, to all of our Faithful here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, we wish you all a very, very, very Christmas. Did you give me the same thing you got me last year, Doug? Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm going to put it in a bigger box, though. <laughs> <laughs> nice spare by Pat. That was a tough shot, too. Had two pieces of wood in front of the four and seven. Just right. Split the two pieces of wood, drove it right straight back. Nice shot. This is on a strike for Rick Kocecki. After Rick's uh, loss to Dan Borden back in August of last year, he made a return trip. Nice shot. Nice shot and a good crowd here following Rick. Splits the one and the three. And an eight fill. Chance for another. On Rick's uh, second appearance on the program, he threw a 404 and beat Kevin Casey, advancing to the ladder championship in that particular series where he lost by one pin to Mike Calvetti. Rick is from Lawrence. here at Sandy's quite frequently, in fact. I just, I asked Rick before the show where he does a lot of his bowling. He bowls here Tuesday nights. So if any of you are in the area on Tuesday nights, come on down. You can <laughs> Rick will give you some pointers. Another tough shot for Pat. One, four, and seven. We've got a tough piece of wood in between. Got to be on the head pin. 
I think I inadvertently, before the show, said that Rick won that match against Mike Calvetti. He lost by a pin. He's back in January of 86. Almost a year ago. Diamond, no. Well, wait a minute. Possibly. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so a 16 pin lead for Rick Kajeki going into the final two here in the first string. <laughs> 16, I'd rather be 16 ahead than 16 behind, but against the likes of Pat Pay, I'd like to be 31 pins up with one box to go. <laughs> Well, this will be a shot here. The one, two, seven, nine, ten, and the ten pin is still there. Everything but the ten. One quick reminder: we're allowed to not move your equipment from lane to lane until the people around you are finished rolling. And Rick backing off as an announcement was made here at Sandy's over the loudspeaker, and Rick looked like a golfer backing out of a putt there. <laughs> On lane 31, and the three pin will stay there for a spare lead. Rick throws that ball inside out, really. Breaks from left to right. That time it broke too far to the right. Missed that three pin. He also has that very unusual delivery. We've talked about it before with very, with really no backswing at all. No, it uh, doesn't throw it very hard. And that's, plus, that's definitely a result because of the the lack of the arm swing. So it doesn't put a lot of speed on the ball, but pretty accurate. And a 131 opening string for Rick Kajeki. The finals for this, uh, this show were held at Botwell's Bowling Center in Concord, and I was able to watch Rick, and he threw a big game the last, last game to make the show. Made some real fine spares. His uh, fifth, game, fifth game in the roll-off. And also, uh, just as an aside, Steve Vadney, who's been making a habit of <laughs> coming on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, he's threatening to take Dan's job, I think, as co-host. <laughs> um, just barely missed this ladder. He rolled a 630, uh, which was just 10 pins behind Rick Kocecki in sixth place. Right, he had two uh, low 100 games. That he, I talked to him afterwards, and he, of course he felt that cost him. It definitely did cost him making the show for a third time. And called the Steve Vadney show for a while. <laughs> and a spare that Pat Pay needed in the 10th. Again, not an easy one. No, he's got that piece of wood way out in front of the six, uh, four and the seven. He's able to drive it straight back. Each bowler with four marks in this first string, and Pat looking for as many as he can get on this fill, and it'll be an eight. And that will tighten things up considerably here, leaving the difference at 10. Rick Kocecki with a 131, Pat Pay at 121. And we'll be back with string number two and details on how you can enter our bonus ball contest after these messages. Don't go away. Well, Pat Pay with that big mark in the 10th frame, string number one. Closing the lead down to 10 pins. Well, if my memory doesn't fail me. I think that's the first time that Pat actually put the ball in the 1-3 pocket. Bowls from right to left, and that's the pocket. Uh, again, wood out in front, costing the shot. That's his pocket. Cross, cross lane, he throws from right to left, and he's going to get a lot of pin action. It's the 1-3 pocket that he wants to put the ball in. Pat's first appearance with us was on January 20th of 85 when he beat Scott Williams in a ladder championship match 428 to 407. It's one of those memorable matches. High yeah, scoring. Pat, Pat was trailing going into the third string and threw a 159 to win going away. And then the last 
series of times Pat was here. He threw a 394 to beat Bill Goturch, then a 392 to beat Mike Brutzos, and then he lost to Lee Brown with a 382, losing by three pins. So Pat's only lost one time here on the program, and he's averaged very, very well as Rick Kojeki starts the second string as he started the first. You know, they talk about speed in this game. Watch his boy. He, this Rick does not throw hard. He's flush in the head pin. But I think because of the lack of speed on the ball, he gets a little better pin action, especially here in this house. I think uh, a lot of hard throwers probably would have been left with a 7, 10, and maybe a few more pins on that hit. But Unfortunately, he had kind of an ugly leaf on that first ball on the strike, so he'll get just a six fill on it. But you're right, Dan. Uh, really, all three of those strikes that Rick has thrown have not been pocket hits. Right, they've been flush on the head pin. Good nice. 10 for Rick. Excellent 10. Off the head pin, head pin goes on, clears the seven. Pat Pay with some marking to do. Trip the four, left himself a legitimate spare leave of six and 10. Again, he's got a tough piece of wood out in front. Ah, it cost him again. Ball clipped the wood, carried through for the six, but the ball went around the 10 pin. And Pat is still looking for that fifth mark. He's been robbed twice in this string. Oh, there's crossing over in that one-two pocket. Doesn't always work. Five with a seven, the eight, and the nine. This time the wood may help. Let's see. Nope. All he needed was a six. He would have had a straight. But we're not playing poker. <laughs> <laughs> that pay markless through the first four. That's not how he wanted things to happen here in string number two. No, but it's not time to panic yet. And uh, of course, Pat's the type of the veteran bowler he is. He's not going to panic anyways. But he's putting the ball in there. He got got a couple bad pieces of wood, cost him a couple marks, and Rick is not burning him up right now. So. And nice looking spare there for Rick Kojeki. He's threatening to burn him up. Splits the one and the three, carries the six for another spare. You saw the English too over the shoulder. <laughs> Just helping a little bit with the body language. Good break there, missed the head pin, but he left himself the one and the three and a big eight fill. And another 15 pins added to his lead. And another spare. And we will pause right here with Rick Kajeki on a spare up in the fourth. And Pat Pay at 37 through four. We'll pause right here and have the rest of the second string and that home address for the contest right after these words. Still looking for his first mark in the second game. There's a one three pocket. Well, I don't believe it. Well, I guess this time he's got a nice little guide. Now well, he stayed away from that piece of wood anyways. First mark in the second string for Pat. Fifth mark of the match for Pat Pay, and they're all spares. Two, four, five, and eight, diamond. Missed the object. Rick Kocecki is working on his second spare in a row. If you take a look at Pat's 10, capping the wood. And Rick off target this time with just a four fill. Just broke a little sharper that time and just missed the head pin going off to the right. Leaves himself the four horsemen to the left with a six and a ten. Dan, in ten pin bowling a lot, they talk a lot about bowlers adjusting to the conditions of the lane, the oil and so on to try and um, adjust for the break of the ball and the spin of the ball on the lane. Is it possible to, for the candle pin bowler to make adjustments for that too based on conditions from one lane to another? Uh, yes, I think you can. Um, ex ex with the exception of the, the margin of error is so so slight in candle pin. It just, uh, 
it's very hard to pick up. But I always say, well, um, this house particularly, they use a lot of lane dressing. And so your ball, anyone that tries to break the ball, the ball's sliding a lot more. So you've got to shoot almost directly at the pins. And don't allow for that, for that much of a break. Rick Kocecki going open in the fifth and sixth. But he has increased his lead to 24 here to this point. Well, Pat Pay just doesn't seem to be getting the, the no. customary spare leaves. 9-10 here, good piece of wood in front. I don't want to overkill a point, though, but uh, the two marks he has gotten in this game came when he was ball was, the first ball was in the 1-3 pocket. Full hit there. And a seven fill for Pat. Well, he's got possibilities. Two pieces of wood in front of the six and uh, four and the seven, if he can hit it with a piece of wood meat, he might have a chance. Oh. Seven pin, refuses to go. Didn't figure it would be the seven. No, I thought his problem might have been the 10 pin. Pat is from Summersworth, New Hampshire. Works at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. He and his wife Denise have a daughter, Lisa. Does a lot of his bowling over at uh, Rochester Bowl Away in Rochester, New Hampshire. In fact, that's where he originally qualified in the preliminary roll-off for this series. That's correct. Rick Kocecki, meanwhile, whom you're looking at right now, qualified right here at Sandy's. Well, they say a home football team is worth three points. I wonder what a <laughs> bowler bowling in his home lanes is, is worth. <clears throat> well, that's spare seven for Pat Pay, looking bigger now in the seventh box as he's shaved another nine pins off the lead. But now Rick Kocecki will have a spare leave in the eighth. Shooting at the 5-8. Important, he's got a, a little drought here. Important to establish himself right here because Pat's making a run at him and flush on that five pin, chopped it off, leaving the eight. And momentum is swinging back. Pat pays way a little bit now. Right now it's a 16 pin lead. Remember Rick Kocecki had 10 pins coming in and he has six more here. Pat Pay trying to put some marks together. One unusual thing about this match so far for Pat Pay, Dan, is that he has not put two marks together yet. He's got a tough piece of wood again. Oh. Just the wood out in front is not being very nice to Pat Pay. That's three marks, this string, that the wood out in front has cost him a mark. And again, <laughs> look at this. Seemingly this a strike ball. He should have a shot at it. The pin that is most parallel. Uh, watch out, it's still out in front. Yeah, nice. Drove it right straight through. <laughs> so again, Pat Pay getting a critical spare in the tenth. His seventh mark, all spares. Nice and nine fill. A good fill. Salvaging a 118 string, which is still 11 pins below Pat's average. No, I, Pat's throwing a good ball, though. He's, he's had the spare leaves. I just had the bad wood kill them. And he's just allowed to throw 150 game in the last game. Five and eight for Rick. Nice mark, nice mark. You see the replay, drives the ball right off the wood, right straight back into the five and the eight. Another good looking ball. And no break on the five pin, it'll be the five ten, but <laughs> Rick is just <laughs> angling the wood. He's positioning it exactly now, how he wants now it. Now that's home court <laughs> advantage right there, I'll tell you. <laughs> Son of a gun, it didn't work. Uh, he had to go really to the left of that five pin. If he missed it to the left, it would have been even better off clipping the end of that piece of wood. And 
that was <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> Rick Kojecki adds to his lead by a factor of five. So after two with Carol Downey putting the scores up on the big board, Rick Kojecki with a 254 and Pat Pay at 239. And we'll be back for the third and deciding string on Stars and Strikes after these words. Rick Kocecki will lead it off in the third and deciding string. He has a lead of 15, which never is safe no matter who you're bowling, but particularly here and particularly against a veteran like Pat Pay is certainly not safe. As you mentioned, Pat's first appearance on the program, he came back from a deficit after two strings with a big, big third string, a 159 to win. 3-6-10 with the seven pin. Got some helpful wood, I believe, in between the three and the seven. Trying to split the three and the six. Just missing. And it's very important. Establish yourself early. And that's what he wanted to do. Pretty 10. Would, well, I was well, about to say it should be out of the way. It's almost out of the way. Well, he's got a choice here. Try to get by it. He runs the risk of capping it or play the wood high. He's going to cap it. Oh, boy. Yeah, you know, turn around fair play sometimes. Pat Pay, uh, we felt he got robbed a couple times in that second game with bad wood. And Rick just was cost us fair, but still so bad wood. So would you call what just happened payback? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I guess you could. <laughs> Six, nine, and ten, this time with favorable wood for a change. Sort of. Well, well, now it's just angled a little bit more, so now it is favorable. Watch off with a nine pin. You called it. <laughs> You've seen it so many times. I've been around bowling lanes, I guess, longer than I... <laughs> here to let people know, but <laughs> just that slight turn of that wood, the last second, gave him a bad angle as far as covering that nine pin. Yeah, well, no. he doesn't have to worry about anything there. Pat says, the heck with this. I'm not going to worry about wood anymore. That's his first strike of the day. And he tosses the towel in disgust when he gets back to the bench. <laughs> Take that. It's been a struggle. Oh, boy. We had talked about that before. It looked like he was going to have the four and the six again, trip the six for a nine pin drop. Oh, he just missed a single. Now you don't think he's not thinking about that. Tough, tough mark for Rick. Plus the fact that Pat's got a strike up. Taking plenty of time to look it over. Clutch spare. Nice shot. Nice shot, Rick. Ninth mark for Rick Kojecki. Six of them have been spares. He's himself a six fill, four horsemen. One, three, six, and ten. A little off target. <laughs> Going for the ten and oh. missing everything. Well. Rick had to make a decision there. Uh, yeah, we'll put an asterisk next to that four box and fourth box on the last string. I'm not so sure. I would probably would have grabbed the nine if I could. Uh -oh. And a double for Pat Pay. Uh-oh. <laughs> no doubt about it either. One, three pocket. Ten pin, a little time to go, but it went. Looking for three. Looks He's good. It. Oh, wow. And that will send us away to a commercial. Pat Pay with a triple strike. And now things have changed quite a bit as Pat Pay has taken the lead. And we'll be back for the rest of the third and final string here on Stars and Strikes after these messages. Well, Rick Kocecki has work to do now. Seven nine. Well, if it was match play, Rick would be up two to zero, winning the first two games. Unfortunately, it's three strings and the total pinfall of three strings. 
And this match could be determined by three balls that Pat Pay has thrown in the second, third, and fourth boxes, which were all strikes. A double even can turn things around in a hurry, but a triple can really do a lot for your scorecard. One set nine to go. And now all of a sudden it's Rick not getting the extra pin. Well, I, it's got to shoot at the 10 pin. Piece of wood out in front of the 10. After that, it's going to be a little fate involved here. Tough shot. Wow. And the ball landed back on the lane about two inches from the 10 pin. And now Pat Pay will step up working on a triple. I'll tell you, none of the three were cheapies. <laughs> no, not at all. It wasn't far away from a fourth one. It just was crossed over into the one-two pocket, a little heavy on the head pin. But he's on a roll now. It's going to be over 100 for the half. You see covering the three and the six. No problem there. Whoops. Wow. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that looked as good as any of the three strikes he threw, and he left himself a mess. Nice try. Not too shabby. 102 at the, at the turn. <coughs> Went from 15 pin deficit to you know, 35 ahead. Amazing. 36 pins ahead now. Well, the best Rick can do is just try and mark out and hope for the best. And again, it's the 10 pin. Well, all of a sudden, it's just turned around for Pat Pay through the three strikes, and now Rick can't buy a mark. Hit a few of the last two boxes. He hit, hit the mark, but didn't, didn't carry the extra pin. And it's down to crunch time now. He's got a mark out. Big fills. Really needs a double strike. One three. That's one. He's got to hope Pat Pay doesn't mark. One three, all over that head pin, the wood behind helps. Oh, nice shot by Pat. Four horsemen to the right plus the nine pin. You see the replay. Trips that four. Gonna run away and hide. And another one. <laughs> well, we talked first two strings. Pat Pay couldn't put so much as two spares together, and then what does he do? He throw a triple strike, and that's gonna decide the match. Oh, nice shot. That's a great shot. Nice shot by Rick. It's a little too late, but some satisfaction from that one anyway. He's a fighter. Splits the three and the six, carries the four, seven for the spare. Nice shot. He's still plugging away. And another one. Well, each bowler had three strikes. <laughs> Unfortunately for Rick, uh, Pat's three strikes were in a row. Uh, oh, full on the head pin, four fell. Well, that's a very frustrating end for what was a promising finish for Rick Kajeki. A 373. Oh. And Pat Pay just adding more and more. 
There again, he was looking at a good leave with a 4-6 leave at the end of this ball. A little heavy on the head pin. But off the sidewall comes a couple pins, knocking down the four and the six. Oh, now watch this. Look at, look at this. This doesn't happen very often. <laughs> the picket fence, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's see. I think he's going to go at the wood in front of the ten pin. Let's see. Snap it off the wall. Nice try. Eight on the strike. He's at 175 right now. He will not. As nice you can see, set a new personal high single, but not too shabby at 177. And turned what was at one time about a 25 or 26 pin deficit into a big win. Pat Pay with the big third string and a 416 to Rick Kojecki's 373. We'll be back to see if we can win someone $150 in the bonus ball and to talk to both bowlers after this timeout. Back at Sandy's, Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and uh, Pat Page done it again in the third string. He's making a habit of this. Oh, it was a yawner there for a while. Back and <laughs> forth, 15-pin lead, and Pat was getting some rough break on wood, as was Rick toward the end. So Pat decided, well, I'm going to fool around with the wood. Let's throw some strikes. And each bowler, like I mentioned, had three strikes. Uh, unfortunately for Rick, uh, Pat's was in a row. And that's, that was the difference, those three balls. All right, well, let's talk to both bowlers. First of all, uh, our runner-up this afternoon, Rick Kojecki. Rick? With a 373, and uh, if you take all of that, we have uh, the check for you and uh, the plaque from NNR Trophy and a copy of uh, Jim Fairhurst's book, uh, The Light Side of Candlepin Bowling, courtesy of John Grappone Thank Ford. And, much. of course, uh, our congratulations. Boy, it, was, uh, it seemed to be going pretty well for you there for a while, and then all of a sudden things changed. Yeah, well, he got a couple of bad wood uh, first couple of shots he had in a rough day. We got that second string, so he, he hasn't hit his average yet, and look out and boom, <laughs> you know. But uh, I just single pins I missed, and it wasn't that sharp when it had to be. And it's the game, that's all. Well, again, uh, we're glad to see you here. Your uh, third appearance overall, and uh, congratulations, and we hope to see you again real soon. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming. Rick Kocecki from Lawrence, our runner-up this afternoon. And now let's have uh, Pat Pay step up on lane 31. We're going to see if we can't win one of you $150 in the bonus ball contest. And let's see if we can get a match. I thought for sure Pat was going to throw another strike, and he did. I had a feeling that was going to happen. <laughs> Come on over here, Pat, and we'll talk in just a second. And uh, as you might expect, it is not a match for Mary Newsom or Nuzum from York, Maine. Thanks for the card, Mary. And uh, unfortunately, her guess was five, so not a match. And uh, that means the jackpot will go up to $160 next week. Pat, why don't you scoot in here real close? Congratulations. Uh, as Dan said, uh, we, we were talking about it, all that tough wood you had. You finally said, to heck with that. The only way I'm going to do anything is hit strikes, right? Yeah, the wood started <laughs> getting, getting me a little mad there, so <laughs> try something different. It worked. Did, what did you do? Did you make an adjustment at all? I just moved over a little bit. Mm. And, that, and that made the difference? Started to throw a little bit harder. Yes. Either they're going to go with or not. Well, now you've got uh, one win, and uh, Bob Mazur will be here next week. I assume you bowled against Bob before. Uh, I know Bob, so I'm ready. All right, we'll be looking forward to that one. Congratulations, Pat. Pat Pay from Summersworth with the win today, and uh, we will have Bob Mazur in here next week, and we'll get a look at the ladder now as it shapes up. Uh, we can look forward now to the weeks ahead. We now have uh, Pat Pay and Bob Mazur coming up next week in the second week of this ladder series. And uh, then we look forward to John Burke the following week, Mike Brutzos, that number two seed, and uh, Bill Gover Jr. making his first appearance here, sitting in the number one spot. So he's in the best position of anybody, just sitting and waiting to see who will survive all the rest of these matches. So you can see pretty close uh, scores uh, in this roll-off series. In fact, just one pin separated Pat Pay and Rick Kocecki coming into this match. Yes, uh, really close. And uh, for the next couple of weeks, I guess we're going to come from the Seacoast area, Newmarket and Rochester. and. And uh, Bob Mazur and John Burke, uh, Pat Pay, must all bowl against each other in leagues. They all from that same area, so it's uh, it's going to be friendship thrown out the window for a while for three strings, and we'll have some good matches. Well, again, a reminder too, uh, if you'd like to get in on our bonus ball contest, which is growing, still growing, we're now going to be up to $160 for the end of next week's program. And once again, we want to take this uh, remaining time that we have on the show to wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas. Hope the holiday season brings all that you hope it will. And uh, I should also mention, too, I forgot to mention it during the course of the show, of course, Carol Downey was keeping uh, the big scoreboard for us, as always, and our new lob line judge, how appropriate, Dennis Noel. 
<laughs> uh, that, was, that, that wasn't even a setup either, really. No, it wasn't. Well. <laughs> but uh, the same to you, Dan, obviously, and uh, we uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and that goes from everyone here at uh, TV50. And likewise from me, Doug, and all the fans out there that, that stop in the Concord and see me and say they watch the show. Merry Christmas to all those people and to you and the, and the entire staff. And, of course, we hope you'll uh, recover from all your Christmas celebrating in time to join us next Sunday at 12 noon right here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Until then, Doug Brown for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew. So long, everybody, from Sandy's.